Welcome back to Just the Facts, y'all. My name is Jimmy, and I am here with a special guest, my guy Ian. Um, yeah. Ian, go ahead and introduce yourself to the to the people here, man, and let them know what's up. Um, yeah, my name's Ian uh, from Fort Worth, Texas, college basketball player. Yes, sir. And um, today we're going to talk about your journey a little bit. We're going to talk about some hoops, of course, because this is something we talk about going way back, high school, middle school, whatnot. We just have hoops conversations like it's nothing. I decided to bring it on the podcast. So we're going to talk about hoops and everything that comes with it, your journey a little bit. And then we're going to talk about kind of like the mind. Um, the mindset heading into it, the the journey of it all, and yeah, but I want to go ahead and get a little bit of background into your journey, man. Um, obviously, I know a good amount of stuff, but there's some stuff that um, I haven't really been caught on yet. So give us a give us a little update, man. Um, well, update um, in the portal, uh, my school actually shut down. So I saw that, bro. Yeah, so right now I'm just finding the school. Um, got a few offers. Uh, so, so just you know, praying and hoping that more will come as time goes on. But uh, keeping my head down, you know, steady working, um, sticking to the process, you know, staying true to myself. Tell the tell the audience how you got to this point because the school we went to is not conducive to people playing um, right. high college sports. Well, honestly, it was like, it was, it was pretty rough. Like, you know, um, I only played two years of varsity basketball and it was my freshman year and my senior Varsity, year. quote unquote. Yeah, varsity, quote unquote. So, um, yeah, like we just, uh, well, I um, just really loved basketball so much that I couldn't have it. I couldn't just, you know, have it in that high school. So, um, you know, thank God I had it. We had a, uh, well, no, you were, you were already in college my senior year, but we had a, um, a former college coach, uh, come down. He was our, he was the head coach of our team. And, um, mm -hmm. he, he saw me and he believed in me enough where he, he vouched for me to a, to a Juco coach. So went and played Juco ball, but even throughout high school, when I wasn't playing for the school, um, we were, I mean, me and you were just gym rats, um, breaking into gyms and you know getting it in that was we was in we were in tcu's gym almost every shout other out night. to desmond bain yeah shout out to desmond <laughs> bain uh kenridge williams let us in the gym a few times yeah like, you know, so we were around some like some real guys uh one of my best friend angus mcwilliam he plays uh in the nbl right now he kind of took me under his wing too and i was just you know focusing and uh seeing how how he played and what he worked on and it just made me fall in love with the game so much. I, I just was obsessed and I, I couldn't let it just stop at, at 12th grade and just, you know, go on to college or just be a student. You know, I had to play college basketball. So that was, that was really it. I was just bouncing around from gym to gym, steady falling in love with the game. I fall in love with the game more and more every day. So. Yeah. Talk to me about the obsession of being a basketball player and trying to be a, a, good to great basketball player because a lot of people just do it just because that's what's destined for them not necessarily because that's what they truly love to do day in and day out for you right. obviously it's a passion of yours it's something you was going to do regardless right so talk about the obsession and the dedication that it has that it takes to kind of go through that grind and go through that whole process it, it's it's hard Honestly, there's there's some days where your jumper's not falling or um, there's some days where the, the ball's bouncing off your Nikes and you just feel like it's just not for you today. So like you really have to be dedicated and just know it's just another day. I really like that part of the process because when when I see myself struggling, I know I'm getting better because it's it's I'm taking myself out of my comfort zone. Um, so that that made me really become obsessed with the game is just the fact I can see myself getting better. I feel myself getting better. And then, um, like every, every time I come back home or even every time I go back to school, people I would struggle against, you know, offensively or guarding them on the defensive end, it's not as hard as it was, or, I mean, you know, I could say it's easy, you know? Um, 
so yeah that that part of just the game is uh of the development and the that's the biggest part of the game is the development and i i became obsessed with that and and then um aside from being a player i also coach so seeing kids develop uh it it makes my day you know seeing a seeing a kid um who couldn't do a jump stop at day one and now he can jump stop through traffic when it comes to day 15 yeah and then finish with contact through traffic at day 30. it makes i mean it it makes me feel, you know, feel better than anything. You know, that that makes me feel better than anything on the world is seeing a kid develop and, and fall in love with the game because I'm already in love with it. But, uh, you know, that that part of the process, just getting better every day, especially like when you put the work in and you put the net, like when you put the actual necessary work in to get better and you notice it. And then when you see other people notice it too and you become a threat, uh, it it just, it just does something to me, man. Like, I, I love it. So... Yeah, that's that's what that's that's why I'm obsessed with basketball. Is literally I'm I'm just getting better, and I love getting better. Yeah, and with your process, you started out at Fort Scott, I believe. Yes, sir. And then, where else have you been? Because you you have been at a couple places now. Yeah, so I went to Fort Scott and um, redshirted my freshman year. Uh, I was a stat class, um, and I was a COVID year too, so we had a lot of you know, D1 JUCO transfers come in and it was, it was a pretty, it was pretty tough. Um, so I read. And, and, and let me, let me stop you right there because I want to say that for the people that don't know, Fort Scott is one of the best JUCO schools in terms of sports, basketball and football. I just want yes, to sir. throw that out there, but. Yes, sir. It's, it's tough. I mean, that, that whole Jayhawk region, um, I, I'll tell, I'll tell people, I mean, I, I don't, you know, for, uh, because of myself playing basketball, my two older brothers, I've been all around the country um, just watching basketball. Yeah. I'll say that that region, that, that Midwest region has the best basketball in the country. Um, when it comes to high school and college, uh, they they produce guys that, that can really play ball. So it was it was tough. Um, and we actually won the championship that year. Um, yeah, so I played there. The, the coach ended up clearing house. Um, so I had to find a new home. Me and my two teammates from Fort Scott ended up finding a home in Minnesota. Uh, played there for uh, for a year. Had some pretty good numbers. Got some looks. Uh, ended up at Greenville University. Didn't, the system really didn't fit me that well. Um, you know, liked it up there. But, I mean, as far as what I want to do, as far as being a, you know, I want to be a professional ball player at the end of the day. Just didn't see see that in my future if I stayed at Greenville. Um, great great coaching staff, great team. Um, just wasn't my fit, you know. So I ended up transferring to Madai, and um, mid semester, well midway through the year at the semester, um, got taken in by Coach Hack and Coach Long and uh, and Coach Cedric. They took me in, and you know we were planning on having a having a hell of a year next year, but ended up getting canceled. So, yeah. but yeah, it was, that was, that was probably, that was a great team. I was, I was a part of for that semester. Um, great conference. And I, I really, I really was looking forward to, to this next year. Talk about the Juco lifestyle, the lower division lifestyle, man, because obviously it's a lot more challenging than a D one lifestyle in a lot of yeah. respects. So, Go ahead and talk to me about like the day to day grind when it comes to JUCO. Take us inside a day in the life of a JUCO athlete. Um, it's hard. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you you wake up, you wake up about well, my JUCO at Kansas. Um, we woke up at about six thirty. Had to be at breakfast at seven o'clock every day, except uh, Saturdays and Sundays. So every weekday we had to be at um at breakfast check, and we had to eat. Uh, you get to class before you go to class, you got to turn in your phone, um, to the coach. So you can, you can be locked into your class. Uh, you have class. Well, I had class from about nine to one o'clock, um, from nine to one, you might have a little time in between your, uh, in between weights or, or film if it's during the season. Uh, cause Juco, you can, you can practice year round. You're not supposed to, but most Juco's do, uh, so you might have a little bit of time. I had about an hour. Wait started at two. I got out of class at one. So I would get to uh I would get to weights, you'd lift, 
go in the locker room, change to your practice stuff. And we had practice for about two hours, two, three hours, depending on how the coach felt. And, um, yeah, that was, that was every day. Like at, at that time, me being 18, um, I, you know, I kind of ran a show in high school. So, you know, I'm not saying I would pull a Iris in and show. You ran a show, bro. Just say it, just say it. But, um, <laughs> Like I, I, uh, you know, being on such a tight schedule, it was kind of like I was in the military, you know, um, it, everything was, you show up five minutes early, five to 10 minutes early. If you're on time, you're late. Um, you go in, you, you give everything you have. If, if someone senses that you're, you're kind of half doing it, oh, they'll chill you out because we're, we're, we're trying to build a, a championship, a championship culture. So it was tough because I wasn't used to it. So it, it broke me the first semester. Um, the set and the, at the winter break, I was thinking about transferring. I, I didn't want to come back because I didn't think I was mentally prepared for it. But, you know, my parents ended up talking me into just going and it ended up turning out good for me. Uh, I might have yeah. not played, but I became that, that difference between me uh, at 18 and at 19 I mean, it's only a year, but it's a night and day difference between the type of player I was, you know, and I, I felt like I came back bigger, faster, stronger, and just really knowing the game, not compared to what I know now, but knowing the game inside and out. Uh, and it, it helped me a lot. It helped me a lot. It broke. It, Juco, Juco's definitely break you down and build you up. That's, yeah. that's definitely what it is. Definitely. I, I think that's probably the best way to say it. But in terms of Juco hoops, from the outside looking in, I never played Juco hoops, but I feel like – from the outside looking in, there's more of a reliance on skill rather than athleticism. Because if yeah. these people were as athletic as the people that we see in D1, they would be in D1. But for the people that are in JUCO, obviously they're still athletic, but not to the degree of a like a D1 guy. Mm. But do you think there's more of a reliance on skill and angles and just overall game plan when it comes to JUCO hoops? Not really. I mean, my experience was kind of the opposite. Uh, we had we had a great X's and O's coach, but we also had some athletes. Um, mm -hmm. We had some six, seven guys with forty inch verticals that could jump out the gym. Uh, the the only difference between a D one guy and a JUCO D one guy is just really discipline, knowing how to jump, stop, and and reverse pivot and kick it out for the for the three. You know, and make the right play. That's that's really the only difference uh, between D one and JUCO guys. Because I mean. You can see now a lot of coaches are digging into the portal, the JUCO portal, to, to yeah. get JUCO guys and bring them to their D1. Um, but, yeah, it's just discipline academically and uh, and, and all the uh, – athletically. That's that's really it. Um, uh, a lot of a lot of D – I've seen a lot of D1 bounce backs play JUCO ball uh, just because they didn't play the – they didn't play the way their coach wanted them to play at that D1. But they're just as athletic as – or maybe even more athletic as anybody on a D1 floor. You know, yeah. Talk about how it's okay for a certain player to go the JUCO route or D two, D three, because I feel like with a lot of people, their ego gets into the way, or just peer pressure, or the environment around them doesn't allow for them to make the decision that's best for them, and they feel like right. they have to make a certain decision based on what are these people gonna think, how are these people gonna feel. Talk about how sometimes it's just cool to put the ego aside and to just do what's best for you, even though you might not like it. Oh uh, yeah, I mean every everybody, you know, when you first pick up the ball and uh, however old you are, um, and you want to, you you only picked up the ball because you saw somebody in your family do it, or like me, I saw Dwayne Wade. When in 2006, 2007, and that was my favorite player. That was my first NBA jersey. Um, I saw him do it and then started seeing my brother do it. And But I always wanted to be that guy on the TV. So, but yeah. everybody can't be that guy on the TV, you know? But, yeah, you got to put your pride to the side and just realize that there's a blessing in front of you, you know? Um, a lot of people in this, you know, who play, well, who play high school basketball, aren't blessed enough to play college basketball. And it's unfortunate because I know a lot of guys who are talented and that could play college basketball at a pretty high level. They just didn't get the necessary, uh, the necessary, um, what, are, what word am I looking for? Yeah. Uh, resources. They resources. Yeah. They didn't have the resources to, to college coaches. Like I, I barely had the resources. 
um to play college bat to play college basketball. I just lucked up. Um so yeah, I mean, if you have that opportunity, don't don't say no to a D two or a D three or an NAI or a JUCO just because you feel like you deserve D one. <laughs> um take take the chance in front of you and make the most of it. And who knows? I mean, you could you could rip it up at a D three, enter the portal and now you're at a D one. I mean, Duncan Robinson played four years at a D three at a D three. Um, and took a grad year at a D1, and now we see where he's at. He's in the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah. I mean, you know, you just got to take the chance in front of you and make the most of it. Uh, don't don't ever don't ever spoil or, you know, not take an opportunity because you feel you're too good for it. The, the worst thing that can happen is you say, if you take the opportunity, you can say, I did it, you know? Um, and no one can say, well, you should have did this. I mean, I did it. So, I mean, it's right. better than saying, no, I didn't, I didn't take it. You know, I felt like I was too good for it. Now, now, like I say, you're at home working at, at Amazon, which nothing's wrong with working at Amazon if that's the only option you had. But if you could have played college ball, I'd rather play college ball than just, you know, work a nine to five because I, I love college basketball. It's, there's no feeling like it. So, yeah, if you have an opportunity in front of you, take it and make the most of it and, and don't look back. I would say, man, don't just... Anyone out there that's listening to this, do not block your blessings when it comes to certain opportunities and certain things in life because opportunities pop up for a reason. Um, they're there for you to take. They're there for you to kind of just follow the journey because you might not see the vision that is being laid in front of you, but it's there. You know, there's the the light is at the end of the tunnel. You might not see it right now, but is there if you are willing to take this certain route that you might not want to take. So that that's kind of what I tell people just in ev anything in life, honestly, when it comes to um, opportunity. But when it comes to actually learning the game, X's and O's, the ins and outs of it, how do you go about it and talk about like the work that has to go into just learning the X's and O's because there's, there's layers upon layers to to basketball. Yes, it's simple, but there's there's a lot to it. Yeah, so um I watch a lot of basketball. <laughs> like I mean it's I watch a I watch a lot of basketball on every level from uh U U eleven um <laughs> or eleven U to to the NBA. I mean I watch all in between and I love it. Um so that's that's one thing you have to you have to like what you're doing um because if not you're just gonna you're just gonna bs it you know you're not gonna pay attention um and but it, it's hard because there's there's 10 moving pieces constantly you know no one's staying still so you can just say oh i'm not gonna pay attention to this part of the court everybody's moving and i mean you never really in basketball you never see the same thing twice honestly um it's you know you might see the somebody might shoot a shot in the corner two or three times, but how they got there or their footing of how they got there and how they got the shot off is different yeah. probably every time. So uh, it's, it's hard, but when you love it, it, it isn't really that hard because at the end of the day, I just chalk it up to I'm watching basketball. You know, whenever someone asks me, Hey, what you doing right now? I'm watching the game. You know, I sometimes when, whenever I'm uh, like, when I coach my kids, I'll have them sit down and watch, uh, like uh, I've been, I, I had watched last summer a lot of uh, Kelsey Plum for the Aces because I mean WNBA basketball is WNBA and college basketball is really good for younger kids, um, because it's nobody really jumping out the gym even though they're all athletic, they're all athletes, they're they're all playing pretty low to the ground and it's a you know it's a lot of X's and O's, slip screens, curl cuts, all of that type of stuff, so. I show them that, but it's a it's a process of you really have to sit down and watch. Um, you can't just sit like it's not like watching a you know like a movie where you can just drift in and drift out. I mean, basketball is a game of runs, and it's a game of quick runs yeah. now. I mean, basketball is probably the fastest it's ever been in the history of the game. So you can look up, and it can be ninety eight to eighty six, and the next thing you know, it's ninety eight to ninety eight. You're like, whoa. They just racked up 12 points. Like, how did that, how did that happen? You know, like where and they, they shot two threes and got to the line once and then shot another three and it all happened. They got stops while they were doing it. So 
you you really have to watch the game and, and love the game you're watching it. It's really basketball is really detail oriented. Um, you can jump as high as you can or as high as you want. You have a 40 inch vertical, a seven foot wingspan, but if you can't read a playbook, you can't play. Yeah, you know, you know that's that's how I that's how I go about learning the game. Um, just having fun with it and just watching a lot of basketball. You mentioned WNBA. That was always something that you had your eye on. Uh, going back, kind of talk about the game a little bit and well just talk about that first I have a follow-up question after that but just talk about the WNBA what made you um really interested in it and and let's go from there um well again just like my my interest in basketball honestly um and I <laughs> I stumbled across um something it was FIBA three on three and Actually, no, I'm lying. I think we were, I was about like 16 and Sab Sabrina Iescu was at Oregon and she was getting a triple double like every other night. So I I tapped in and I, I remember watching her on ESPN. I think she was maybe playing Washington or something like that. And I think she had like 30 points, 15 rebounds and 12 assists. I was like, wow. I was like, oh, she's, she's great. So I kept watching her and then I followed her into the league. And then I would see like the Aces play. That's my favorite team. And I would see um, she got drafted to the Liberty. So I was following them heavy. And ever since then, I just I just fell in love with it. I mean, it's a very it's a very good basketball league. I mean, it's not what what people in social media comments crack it up to be. It's not just, you know, uh, a league that's just there just to be there. I mean, it's, they they have ball players. Every single one of those women can go into any open gym and dominate no no questions asked um and that that just is what it is you know so um yeah i just fell in love with that and i was i was looking i was just like wow there's a lot there's a lot more detail in this in this sort of game uh than there is in the nba and the nba is great as well but i i like i like the wnba too so yeah i just i just watch them i watch them both you've made a comment on people making whole bunch of Instagram comments, like memes, Twitter, everything like that, kind of just bashing the WNBA just because it's a women's sport. Um, it kind of gets to me because at the end of the day, they are professional athletes and they will come into an open gym, like you said, and give anyone a bucket. So I wonder yeah. what, what I always wonder is how that, how that dynamic just came about, man, because it's it's honestly sad to see. It's it's sickening in all honesty, because it's like it's, it's so bad. Uh a lot of people, a lot like these women put in the work. They put in the work to be where they are and they get paid money, not enough money. They don't get paid with what they should get paid, but they get paid money to to play basketball. And that's I mean, only a small percentage of the world, I'm talking seven, eight billion people who walk this earth, get paid to go play college ball. And then you separate that to professional. You you can't take these women lightly. You know, they they aren't they aren't just like regular ball players, regardless of their of their gender. Like they can play basketball, you know. So I mean, I'll look in the comments and just be like, yo, like I I wanna see you guard diana tarasi where, where, do, where do you think the ignorance came from and i guess hatred I, honestly i don't know i mean people people are just i mean you know people are just ignorant in general and i think a lot of people nowadays especially with social media take ignorance as humor and it's not um being being ignorant isn't funny but or trying to make jokes of something that you know nothing about <laughs> isn't funny so, um, but I mean, people laugh at it. So, but it's, it's if, okay, you, you stay in front of, you stay in front of her, you, you see what you can do. Yeah. And you can tell like a lot of, a lot of like, you know, like hoopers that are, you know, play like a lot of guy hoopers are like, Doug, you couldn't stick her at all. <laughs> like you can't stick anybody. So I don't know why it's, it's easy to talk crazy over a keyboard is really easy you know it's, what they're more successful than the whoever it is commenting than they are successful in their own life 
Exactly. So it, it doesn't exactly. even matter at the end of the day. It's like they can they can say, "Yeah, I just played in Staples Centers and in front of a crowd, and I get to go home now." You you have to do whatever you want to do or whatever you have to do, which is fine. But don't disrespect this woman doing. And at, at the end of the job, at the end of the day, it's her job. Don't disrespect somebody doing their job. Yeah. You know, and say yeah. that you could do it better when you know you can't. Because I know if I can't do your job. I'm not going to disrespect you and say you suck at your job. I can't I can't do it myself. So how, who am I to say that you suck or that you're great? You know, I can't do it. So I'm just going to shut my mouth about it. So that's that's really all it is. I mean, it's just people being ignorant. I really can't tell you where where it came from. I think it's just I mean, as time goes on, we see it kind of start to drift away and people start to give these women the respect they deserve but there's there's always a few trolls um and they just they just try to make jokes for a few laughs and they sometimes they get them a lot of the times they don't so that's it's it's weird they're they're weird people everything's all attention nowadays but yeah, that's all you talked about how living day by day in your journey is a big thing that you stand by just go deeper into that in Letting people know how important it is to stay in the moment. Let them know how important it is to control what you can control and things of that nature. Just in life in general, when in whatever career field. Yeah, man. I mean, you can you can only control your life, you know. Um my uh like you 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 know the term, uh don't 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 bite more than you can chew, yep. you know. Um so that's that's what I live by. Don't don't do too much and you get overwhelmed. You know, um, I live by that, and I live by uh, what one of my coaches told me. Um, life is about uh, life is ten percent of what you do and ninety percent of how you react to what happens around you. Um, so you know, I I talk about why well, I, I think about my reactions and how they'll affect me and other people, um, and I just take everything day by day. Uh, I relate everything to basketball. Um, cause ba I've been playing basketball since I was, you know, four years old. So, I mean, we, we talk about scoring, right. But how do you score? Right. You, you have to learn how to dribble first. You have to learn how to shoot. You have to learn how to not travel. You got to learn the rules of the game before you get good at the game or like setting up a play. How did he get this open shot? Well, he ran off of three picks and he set a pin down himself. And it's a lot of steps in between to get into a bigger goal, you know? So I, I take every day. Um, when I wake up hour by hour, minute by minute, you know, and I, I just slow things down. I try not to just get to the, the end of the day because I have 24 hours in a day. So let's use them all. Let's let's try to be as 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 productive and useful as we can and develop as much as we can in these 24 hours. Um, not don't do too much and, and don't uh, don't do too much and don't do don't do nothing, you know, um, be productive and. And be aware of what you can do and what you cannot do and know what you have to work on. And um, that's that's really it. I mean, I just take every day, day by day. Sometimes it, it can be hard to find a good balance between taking everything day by day and viewing mm -hmm. your life holistically and looking into the future. Because obviously, we all look into the future. Yeah. We're all thinking about what's next in store. Right. But at the end of the day, you can't control any of the shit that potentially could happen. The literally the only thing you can control is what you're doing right now in this moment. I want to know your thoughts on your journey from the from the aspect that you you're not gonna have everyone believing in you. You're not gonna have everyone thinking what you're doing is the right thing to do in your life. And right. it's not fair because no one else should get a vote in that but you but mm -hmm. go about go talk talk to me about how it is hard kind of dealing with friends and family not seeing that vision that you see um for yourself in in your journey yeah uh it's tough um i've, I've dealt with it with my with my friends and my family um but you you have to uh you have to understand that it's your journey it's nobody else's so um and and you you have to live and die with your decisions and i mean you got to live with no regrets uh 
So I I do everything the way I want to do it and when I want to do it. I started, you know, as people say, running my own race when I was about 16, 17 and, and just doing what I wanted to do, how I wanted to do it at the pace I'm going to do it at. You're not going to rush me. Um, I'm, I'm going to do it how I want to do it. I'm going to I'm going to feel good about it at the end of the day. I'm not going to have any regrets about it. Um, so, yeah, it's it's tough when people don't believe in you, but you have to you have to believe in your work. Um, I've, I've been in the gym a lot shooting by myself. Um, or working out by myself and I believe in myself, you know, because I, one person that's been in the gym with me all the time is me, you know, or one person that's been in my room, just chilling by myself is me, you know? So I, I believe in everything that I do, regardless of what, what anybody says, regardless of the relationship. So. And it's way easier to live with your decision when, once you, when you make it for yourself, even if it doesn't right. end up working out the way that you want it to. You can still feel good about it. You, you you won't have any regrets of, damn, I should have. Obviously, you're going to be like, damn, maybe I should have done this. But at the end of the day, you're not going to have any regrets because you'll still learn yeah. from the situation. Or at least you should. I mean, we, we both wouldn't be here where we are right now if we, if we you know, did what other people told us to do. We wouldn't, wouldn't be, be here. here. So, I mean, and think like this is crazy because like we, we went to the same high school. We played basketball together. Um. You know, we had a guy there before me that was, I mean, better than me, I guess. Uh, but he didn't end up playing college basketball. Um, and when I got up, when it was my my time up to bat, uh, a lot of people said, you can't do it. He didn't do it, so you can't do it, you know? And I, I kind of, um, <laughs> I don't know if you know a lot about boxing, but... Um, I, I talked to, I talked to my granddad about it. I felt like Ali, when he got back from, when he got back from his ban on, from not going yeah. to Vietnam, like, <laughs> you're not what you think you are anymore. You, you haven't played and we haven't seen you play in two years and you're not that, you're not who you think you are and you'll never be this. So when I got up, I was like, oh yeah, I can't, I'm not going to let anybody tell me nothing. I'm just going to do what I want to do and how I want to do it. And I'm going to let everybody yeah. hear it. I, and I mean, I was probably the most annoying kid on that on that campus. I let everybody know because I mean, I'm putting in a lot of work, <laughs> and, and my work is showing too. And oh man, I made people sick. And you could you couldn't tell me anything. Oh yeah, you're not gonna play basketball. You're not gonna play no college ball. Oh, I bet I do. <laughs> I bet I do, and I bet I do it the way I want to do it. I had already so, left by that point, but I can just imagine how that shit went. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was, it was bad. It was it was bad. Everybody was hearing me. Oh, I was making people sick, and I I loved every minute of it. I loved every. I had two of my best friends, Chris and Daniel, and they was they was like they was right in my ear too, telling me, "Oh yeah, you can do this for sure." And we was we was running around the campus. They were like, "Yeah, my guy is about to go co play college, and then he's gonna go pro." So I mean, I'm playing college ball right now, and if if God keeps working, which I know He will, I'm gonna be playing pro soon. Yeah. So. It feels amazing when you just do your own thing and and you get the you get the results that you've been working and praying for. It feels amazing, man. Like I like like we mentioned earlier, man. You you're you were at the school that I just shut down. So I want to ask, what's next in your journey, man? Well, we're taking it day by day. So I mean, right now we're we're just reaching out to schools, and some schools are are reaching back out, um, and we're just trying to collect the offers and get as many options as we can. Um, we meaning me, my friends, my family, uh, and we're just, you know, we're just thankful that, that we were in this position in the first place that we had a school we could go to, you know, um, now it's just all a, all a matter of finding another school. Um, so yeah, just taking it day by day. I mean, my, my next thing, my next big thing is I'm going to, uh, Massachusetts to go coach. So um i'll i'll do that and then hopefully maybe before then or or during i'll make my decision and i'll be somewhere playing next year but i have no i have no worries that i'll be playing that i won't be playing basketball next year um i i can't see me not playing anywhere in my future uh, i don't see that i think i'll i think i'll have a home it's all just about finding the right fit uh madai was the perfect fit i i love the culture there i love the city um but unfortunately, it's no, it's no longer a thing, which is, which is fine. I mean, you know, not every, not everything is in my hands. You know, a lot of things aren't in my hands. So I just have to live life just like everybody else lives life. And yeah, me and my teammates are just chopping it up every day, just like we would in person. And we're just texting and talking and 
you know, throwing feelers out and getting each other in contact with coaches and helping each other out. That's that's really it. And, you know, so I, my next step is, you know, get offers, get a lot of options, talk with my family um, and make a decision as, as far as the grand scheme of things, as far as like where I'll go to school, just relax and, you know, make a decision. That's great, man. I'm I'm happy for you, man, for real, because I've seen, you know, I've seen it, you know, I've, I've seen the journey, bro. And yeah. I really, I really appreciate it because seeing other people win, seeing other people do great and grow. Honestly, there's, there's almost nothing that motivates me more than that, like in the best way possible, yeah. you know, because it forces me to be like, okay, let's get on my, let me get on my game now. Let me elevate myself mm -hmm. now. Seeing other people do, do their thing, do they do what they do? It's just like, damn, like, let's get it. You feel me? But yeah, I really am grateful to have seen this, um, this journey of yours, man. And hopefully it just keeps on growing and growing and growing nonstop, bro. I appreciate you having, uh, taking the time to hop on, man. Appreciate you so much for hopping on this podcast. Is there anything you want to leave the audience off with? Any piece of advice you want to just add on to to the end of this? Um, be I actually got this tattooed on. Be you in every moment. Don't don't change yourself at all in any in any type of circumstance or scenario. Uh, be you all the time and. And don't change for anybody and don't have any regrets on, on your decisions. And don't let anybody um, try to influence your decisions negatively. You know, only only bring in positive energy and, you know, and don't don't feel bad when people uh, try to chastise you for not, you know, for not having them in your life if they bring negative energy. Know, know your, you know, know what you want to do and stay positive to it and stick stay simple to as it. that man Literally. um ian appreciate you for for being on man um uh, for those of y'all watching make sure to like comment share subscribe to the channel for more content like this more interviews um and things of that nature so i uh, love and appreciate every single one of y'all who show me um a great amount of support on 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 this stuff man it really means a lot for me a lot goes into it that y'all don't see but it really means a lot. So with that, I'm going to wrap this thing up. Um, be different. Be a wonderful one. I'm out. Peace. Mm -hmm.